Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Beverly Harper. I'm president of Portfolio Associates. We are part of the uh, bus network uh, redesign uh, consulting team for uh, SEPTA. Uh, after a uh, brief welcome from Bill Webster, who's the uh, assistant general manager for communications at uh, SEPTA, I'll come back on to talk to you a little about what to expect this this afternoon. So thank you for being here. People are uh, joining as as we speak. Uh, just to let you know, we had close to 150 mm -hmm. people who registered uh, for the uh, after for the session this afternoon. So with that, I'll turn it over to Bill Webster for a welcome from SEPTA. Thank you, Beverly, and uh, welcome everyone to the session today. Um, just a little background, SEPTA's bus network is really the backbone of our system and crucial to providing access and opportunity for people throughout the city and the SEPTA service area. In particular, the bus network provides key connections for the region's low income population and communities of color. And so ex expansive and inclusive outreach is a key component of the, our new strategic plan, and it's why we're here today. The staff and the consultants working on Bus Revolution, which is our title for the bus network redesign, are committed to an engagement process that does four things. One, that it is local. Uh, we want to meet riders where they are, at bus stops, at transportation centers, and at community meetings and events. Number two, this process is sustained. We will meet with our customers and the public throughout the process, from the beginning, through the implementation, through all phases. And three, we wanna be responsive. We're committed to this revolution, staff listening to uh, customers actively, to your ideas and concerns to provide answers and circle back if more research or analysis is needed. And finally, we are committed to being transparent. We're committed to making sure that you have a clear understanding of what is being proposed and why decisions are being made. Uh, while it's not possible to promise that everyone will be on board with every, uh, each and every outcome, we do want people to feel like the process was fair and that your voices are being heard. Those are the commitments we're making. We're excited about this process. Uh, we're engaged and uh, looking for your input so on that note, I'll turn it over to Beverly to more formally kick off today. Okay, thank, thanks, Bill. Uh, just a, a, a couple of um, announcements. We have two sign language interpreters uh, who you'll be seeing uh, on the screen, Jay and Amy. Uh, they're, they're great. Uh, I just want to remind the um, presenters to just keep that in mind that we have sign language interpreters. Um, there will be um, live polling throughout the session. Uh, there'll be three polls, uh, I think. You'll see, uh, I'll ask some, we'll ask some questions. Uh, you'll see the questions. You'll have a chance to identify your responses and we'll see the answers immediately. We had about uh, 100, close to 150 people who registered for the session this afternoon. I think there are about between 60 and 70 who are participating um, right now. Uh, I will remind you that your uh, microphones are, are off, but we would like to hear your questions. So we'd like you to put your questions um, in the Q&A function and um, at the end of the session, we will respond. Uh, we will respond to them. We do have a, a tech team who's supporting us, and if anything goes uh, awry with uh, technology, you might hear someone else's voice. Uh, for the session this afternoon, um, we'll have uh, Dan Nemirov from, who's a senior operations planner for SEPTA, mm -hmm. will be uh, speaking. Bethany Whitaker, who is a principal with Nelson Nygaard, the prime contractor for the bus redesign 
um, project. Um, as I said, we'll have a Q and A uh, at the end of the session, and three mm -hmm. polling um, opportunities. So I'd like to uh, start the polling with some, uh, I'll call them get to know you polls. So if I could have the first poll. Okay, this is something that's close to my heart. Who will be the starting quarterback for the Eagles this year and next? So make your choice. This is just to get you used to using the polling. Uh, Jalen Hurts, Joe Flacco, bring back Nick Foles. Yay, he brought us a, the uh, Super Bowl. Bring back Jaws. And the few outliers who admit to being Giants fans. So I'll give you uh, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's have the answers. Oh, Jalen Hurts, very, very nice. Glad to see that the Giants fans did not uh, did not increase. Poll number two. When is the last time you rode a SEPTA bus? Today, within the last week, within the last month or so, not since before COVID. So I'll give you five more seconds to respond. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see the results. This, this information is uh, e extremely helpful uh, for us. Uh, so most people are not before, not since before COVID. Um, but there were people who rode today. Thank you very much from SEPTA and all of us. Next question. This is a prospective question. One year from now, how often do you see yourself riding SEPTA buses? People are responding. We have between 70 and 80 people in the session. So let's um, end the polling. Five, four, three, two, one. And this is uh, good news for SEPTA. People see themselves riding frequently. And I'll join that. So thank, thank you very, very much. I'd like to uh, now welcome uh, Bethany Whitaker, who's a principal with Nelson Nygaard, who is the, um, uh, the manager of this uh, project. And she'll be presenting, uh, doing most of the presentation. Please remember that uh, you can put questions uh, in the Q&A at any time uh, during her presentation. And so uh, welcome, Bethany. Thank you, Beverly. So great. Let's, um, I, my name is Bethany Whitaker. I work for a company called Nelson Nygaard. We, as Beverly mentioned, we're the prime consultants for this effort and we'll, and we're working with some other, other firms and other teams, but we'll be leading the comprehensive bus network redesign, which we're calling the bus revolution. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes talking about the project and our approach and some of the opportunities that are gonna be um, presented over the next, um, several months and actually in fact three years um, for people to stay engaged with the project and participate as we as we go through this process. So today I'm going to give you a high level overview of what the project is, what our goals are, and then we're going to talk about the technical approach, community engagement, question and answers, and then we'll just close out with some ways to stay in touch. Um, before I dive in, I do want to say that this we really see this process as a balance between the technical work and using data to understand what the needs are, where the opportunities 
opportunities are, where things are working well, where things aren't working well. But at the end of the day, we know that the bus network is really about people and that if we're successful in making the bus service as effective and as convenient as possible, we'll see it with more riders. We, and that's really what our end game is, is to make sure that the bus network is is as useful as possible to everybody that lives in Southeast um, Pennsylvania and in particular the city of, city of Philadelphia. So as um, Bill mentioned, what we're, we're calling this project SEPTA Forward Bus Revolution and that name is not accidental. We're really seeing this as a revolution, an opportunity for us to totally reimagine the way that the bus services are being delivered and provided in the region. And that means includes, you know, the times of day and the days of the week. So when the service is available, when it is most frequent, when it is less frequent, where it's going, we're talking, we're going to look at every neighborhood, all the corridors, the communities, the urbanized area, the suburban areas, and the, and the way that we integrate with other SEPTA services. So how the bus routes work with the regional rail, with the Broad Street line, with um, the Norristown high speed line, and how best do we serve these communities at what times of day? There's really no shortage of ideas and opportunities for the way that things could be improved. And we're really hoping to put them all on the table and sift through them to find out what works best for the region. So in terms of the specific goals that we've set for the project, the first one is really about making sure that the bus service is easier to understand and easier to use. Also to make it faster and more reliable, to make it easier and more efficient to operate, and then respond to the changing travel patterns. We know that the travel patterns were already changing before COVID, and now that we have COVID, things are changing again. And as, as we move away from the COVID period and we're starting to go back to work, we, we know that things are changing. So we wanna make sure that the bus service is aligned with those changes in response to that. And so we have those four goals, and what I wanted to do is to have another poll quickly and ask you all to rank those polls. Those, those goals. So Henry, would you like to bring up the poll? So the first question that we're asking here is, of the four goals, what is the most important goal to you? Making the system easier to understand and use, making it faster and more reliable, making it easier and more efficient to operate or respond to changing travel patterns. And I know most of you probably, well, hopefully you wanna connect, uh, select all four, but we're asking people just to pick one. So I'll give you a minute to go ahead and respond. Looks like faster and more reliable is out to an early front runner. Excellent. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to answer. We have about almost 80% of the people who have responding to the poll. So, I'll count down five, four, three, two, one, and we'll close the poll. And the winner by, by a long shot is making the service faster and more reliable. And so thank you for that, that's helpful for us. And then I think we have another poll that asks about some additional goals that we might not have called out in the first round. So the other goals that we wanted to um, ask you about is are th making connections. So the way that um, the service connects with other service, the comfort of the service, the sustainability, so um, clean fuels, electric buses, things like that, and then the affordability of the service. So fares and how much it costs to take a ride. And so go ahead and vote on these other goals. And I'll give you a minute again. This is great, there's a lot of people starting to use it and it looks like connections is again, by far the most important secondary goal. So I'll give you just another five seconds to, to weigh in, counting down five, four, three, two, one, and we'll close the polling. And again, you know, as mentioned, connections one by a landslide. So that's really helpful. It will definitely keep us, give us some guidance and some instructions as we move forward with the study. So thank you for your help there. And now what I wanna do is just kind of give you an overview of the technical approach. So the, comp, the bus revolution is gonna be a three-year project. It has started already. We started work in February of this year, but we're still you know, at the very earliest stages of the project. And 
um, the third year of the of the project is really going to be about it's going to be about implementing implementation. So we'll spend the next year and and a half year, almost two years doing the planning and the design. And what that what the steps are is first we're going to be doing a state of the system, and that's where we look at the market and the community demographics, employment, travel patterns, how the re what the region looks like from a high level perspective so we can understand where the needs are and where the opportunities for improvements are. The other big technical piece that we're doing early is evaluating each of SEPTA's bus routes. SEPTA has 125 bus routes. We're gonna be looking at each of those routes, looking at every trip, every bus stop, and understanding where they're working well and where they're working less well. As we do the state of the system and the individual bus route evaluation, we'll start to catalog and identify opportunities for improvement. We'll put those together in scenarios and packages of improvements, and then bring those scenarios out to the public to for input and feedback. What do you like? What don't you like? We often have two or three scenarios and we really want to focus on asking people what they like about each one rather than voting on, oh, I like A better than B. But what is it about A that you like? What is it about B that you like? So that we can put those together and come up with some draft and final recommendations. And then, as I mentioned, move forward with implementation. And we're hoping that where our expectation is that implementation will happen in the third year, so 2023. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the technical work that's going on right now and both the state of the system report and the market assessment. In both cases, I'm going to show some maps and some analysis. All the findings are preliminary. We've just started to um, prepare some of these and look at them. But as I mentioned, the state of the system is a really important part of the analysis and it really gives us this blank slate perspective on where the opportunities are, where the needs are, where people need transit the most, and and how we can design the transit system so it meets those needs. So there are a lot of things that determine how, where, and how transit service can be successful. One of the most important, some of the most important ones are population density and employment density. So areas where there's the highest concentrations of people and jobs, mm -hmm. but we also know that demographics and the type of employment also make a difference for where tra transit is needed. The other thing is the overall travel pattern. So where are people traveling every day, whether they're doing it by bike or by car or by walking, we want to make sure that the transit system reflects those travel patterns. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about population density and the demographics and some of the ways that we're combining both population density and demographics to understand transit need. So this map that you see on the right here is a map of population density in Southeast Pennsylvania with a focus on the city of Philadelphia. And so areas that are brighter red show areas where the population density is higher, and that tells us that there is opportunities to provide more transit service in those communities, and maybe even more frequent transit service in those community. The other thing we know from surveys is that there is a difference between who rides the bus and the overall population. So we are taking a look at that survey data and understanding who what it, who are the people that are more likely to ride um, SEPTA bus services? Because we want to give those areas more attention and more importance in our analysis. So by looking at the survey, we know that people that don't have a vehicle, um, race also has a factor in bus ridership. So people who are black are more likely to ride it than people who are white. People who live in poverty are more likely to ride the bus. Older adults, people age 65 and over, are also more likely to ride the bus. And there's a few other factors that aren't included here as well. So you can see the areas that are green on the map on the right-hand side. That shows us some of the adjustments that we made to the to the population density map. Those are areas where they have higher concentrations of some of those demographic groups that I just spoke about. And then when we put the two maps together, you can see how the transit, the population density changes when we adjust it. And when you look at the map on the right, you can see that the, the population, that the map is brighter and there's more red spots. So that's telling us that there's more demand in those areas. There is our opportunities to, to do a lot with transit service. When we see those bright red covers, colors, we know that we could send a bus in those neighborhoods or there's communities every 10 minutes or something like that where the colors start to pale out. The demand and the need for transit service is less. So this is just the first of many analyses that we're going to be including in our state of the system report. I want to give you just a minute to take a look at those maps and remind you that if you have questions, um, you can put them in the um, chat function, in the question and answer function on, the, on your screen, and we can come back to those later. 
um, you'll start to see more of these types of maps from Nelson Nygaard and from SEPTA. We'll be publishing them on the website. But so this is just an introduction and just a high level perspective on some of the type of work that we're doing. So the other piece that I wanna just give you a little bit of insights into is the root evaluation. Because again, this is a big part of what we're doing this year in 2021 and that we have started already and that you'll start to see in the coming weeks and months. And this is where we work as I look as I mentioned at each of SEPTA's 125 bus routes and we look at every stop, every trip and we're really looking at what's working well, what's not working well and where there are opportunities to improve things. So we're looking at things like ridership, like service reliability, on-time performance, the patterns, the integration with the other SEPTA services. So in the previous poll, you told us things like that speed and reliability were most important to you. That So this route evaluation process will really help us know which bus routes are on time which ones are reliable, which ones are carrying a lot of riders in cases when they're not reliable, why they're not reliable, and how we can fix things and improve them for everyone. So again, just some preliminary data that I'm going to show you right now. This is Route 52, and the map on the right shows a ride. It's a ridership map. So the green colors are showing us places where people are getting on the bus. The red shows um, places where people are getting off the bus. So you can see this, and this is a, um, a bus traveling outbound, so heading north, and you can see in the beginning of the, of the bus route, everybody's getting on. Once they get to Market Street, they start to both get on, but also get off the, the bus, and then as it moves forward, you're seeing a more balanced, um, every time the bus stops, there's a lot of people getting off, but there's still a few people getting on. And again, this is just an indication. It's a little bit of a taste of the type of analysis that we're going to do. We will be sharing all of our route evaluations with the public and inviting people to comment on them. Um, so that will be something that you can look forward to and, and get involved with in the coming months. So moving forward to talk about community engagement, as I mentioned in the beginning, we know that the bus system, of course, it is a it is a system and there is a lot of technical work that we need to do to understand it and understand where it goes. But ultimately, people and the riders are the most important part of that. So we are taking the community and stakeholder engagement very seriously as part of this project, as Bill mentioned in the at the beginning of the webinar, really making sure that we meet people where they are, that we have a tailored and customized approach, that we focus on equity, that we're transparent. We're going to try some things. If they don't work, we can ad adapt to that and do things a little bit different next time. A lot of the community engagement will be about us providing information, but there will be a lot of opportunities and hopefully more opportunities for us to be asking you for information. What's your opinion? What do you like? What don't you like? So, and really focus on engaging people where they are. So in terms of our technical approach, there's a, a lot of opportunities for people to be engaged and we will have um, an information hub that will be available throughout the project. There's a handful of times that we're really gonna spend a lot of effort to try to get out and engage people and listen to what their interests are, what their needs are. So in particular, those times are this, when we're doing the state of the system and the route evaluation, and that's going to be in the coming weeks and months. And then a lot of the opportunities for improvement in creating those scenarios, we'll be doing some of that with stakeholders and members of the public, but a lot of that will be done kind of back of the house. And then we'll be bringing that out um, to the community, to the stakeholders, to the bus riders, asking them for feedback and asking them for input. And then we'll adjust our scenarios based on that input and come back out with the draft recommendations before we move into implementation. And then just as a um, indication, you know, state of the system is something that we're working on now. The root evaluations, we should start to have those conversations in the summer. And then the scenarios, we're hoping by the end of the year, beginning of next year, with draft and final recommendations available for the summer of 2022, and then moving into implementation in 2023. So I'm going to spend a minute talking a little bit about each of these um, engagement cycles so you can get a, a sense of what's coming. So this first round of engagement, our our goal for the input session is really understanding what people's concerns are, what their values are, what their desires are. So what do they really want to change and, and what's working well that they want to preserve and what are the things that there are opportunities to do a little bit differently. We'll also be building our database and our infrastructure so that we have improved and better methods for reaching out with people. So we have a virtual information hub. That's our website. I'll show you the website address um, later in the in the presentation. There's also a telephone number that you can call. We have an initial survey that's available. We're doing this open house today and we're doing a, we're holding a lot of interviews with stakeholders, members of the uh, 
city of Philadelphia, some of the transit advocate groups. We're talking to some employers, some of the transportation management associations. So a lot of the institutions and organizations around, around town. Um, moving forward, we're really, we also have a session or a section of our engagement that's really focused on choices and trade-offs. And this is where we're going to ask you for your preferences and your priorities. If you could have this or that, which is the thing that you value the most, that you want to see happen the most. This is a big engagement effort. We're going to um, have a lot of opportunities for people to learn about what we're talking about. We'll do some transit talks, post some videos, make some presentation, have some in-person pop-up events. We will also do a survey. And then at the same time the information hub which is right now it's still virtual the website but you'll start to see the state of the system report and the root evaluation online so people can go in read them and comment on them um, moving into the end of the year and in the winter is when we'll start to have those alternatives and those options for service improvements that we want to be bringing out to everybody and invite people to review them, to comment on them, and get their feedback. So that, again, will be a whole bunch of workshops, transit talks, some pop-up events, times when we go out to the communities in a very deliberate and structured way, um, having some more surveys. And then, of course, information will always be available online, and we'll have some printed versions of the materials out in the community so people can also take a look at it that way. And then as we move into the summer of next year, we'll have draft recommendations that again we're going to you know have a whole network of options and opportunities for people to to participate to, you know in community meetings working with some ambassadors in the communities presentations transit talks pop up events field hubs public workspaces we're going to try to be out in the field talking to as many people as possible doing some surveys and having our information accessible to as many people as possible so then as we get feedback on those draft recommendations. And again, as Bill mentioned, hopefully our goal, we can't satisfy everybody, so not everybody will get exactly what they want, but our goal is to make sure that everybody who has an opinion or has a, a, a point of view that they would like to share, that they have an opportunity to share that and that we will listen to that and take that into consideration as we make final recommendations. And then moving in, into implementation, again, this could be a big change. So we need to have a, we'll have a big effort in guiding riders as they sort of understand what's changing and, and how to adapt to that. So we'll have a lot of people out on the streets helping people through the transition, as well as a lot of information up and available beforehand. And so that's the overview of the community engagement. And again, we're going to do a poll. But as I went through that, if there's a couple things that you want clarified or you didn't understand, you know, definitely put a question in in the Q&A bucket. But for now, I'm going to just um, invite Henry to show another poll. And this poll is, to, is asking you, what are the best ways for us to stay connected to you, connected with you? So when you think about our community engagement, what are some of the ways that, that, that you would like to participate in that? Is it, you know, surveys, community meetings, social media? Websites, pop-up events, videos, radio shows, TV. Excellent. This is interesting because not there's not a clear winner. So kind of a horse race down to the finish. All right, so we're about three quarters of the people who have voted who are online. So I'm going to count back, count down from five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, and we can close the poll. And this one's interesting. All right, so social media um, got the most votes, but it's interesting to note that the surveys, community meetings, and the pop up events also, and the website also got a lot of votes, and they're clearly important strategies for us to stay connected and engaged with people moving forward. So thanks for that. All right, so I think what we're going to do now is um, go to the questions and answers section of the webinar. So I'm going to invite Beverly um, back on screen, Henry Fellman, and then also Dan Nimeroff from SEPTA, and we will start to answer the questions that people have asked. Henry has been uh, looking at your, um, at your questions, and so I'll ask uh, Henry to read the first question. Thank you, Beverly, and thanks to everyone. 
uh, who's joining us today and to everyone who's uh, entered a question in the Q&A. Uh, we invite you to continue to ask, ask questions during this session as well, and we'll, uh, we'll be monitoring those. Uh, so the first question um, is, while this program is focused on the bus system, will there be any consideration given to new or enhanced subway below and above ground or trolley service to complement these efforts. All right, so uh, I think I'm gonna pass that to Dan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, Bethany. Um, so this project is, is heavily focused on the bus network. Um, we are gonna consider connections to the subway, connections to the L, connections to the rest of the rail transit network, but the recommendations we will be making are 100%, um, you know, it's going to be 100% focused on the bus network, which is, you know, a good, you know, half of our overall ridership. So I think it's important that that we focus, you know, on the bus network. Those other modes sort of are going to be looked at over the next few years through our long range planning process as well. But this is focused on the bus. Okay, Henry, do we have another question? Plenty. Um, <laughs> this is about the goals. So maybe Bethany here. Uh, why isn't growing ridership an explicit goal? Yeah, I, I would say that that's a good point and it should be an explicit goal because ultimately as a, ridership is the measure of success and it is the fundamental thing that we're trying to accomplish is to increase ridership. So I think that point is well taken and something we can update to our, to our goals. But as, as just add to add just a little extra context, though, I think it, we do we do want to grow ridership. I mean, that is definitely an, a, a major goal. But I think improving access to our existing customers and making sure they can use our system to get where they need to go um, or where they want to go if they can't get there now uh, is is as important as as growing ridership. Thank you, Henry. How will proposed bus infrastructure improvements in the city's Otis transit plan be incorporated into bus revolution? In Boston, for example, the MBTA is planning along a clear unified timeline for bus network redesign, street infrastructure, and fleet replacement. Um, I, can, I can handle that one. Um, so we work very closely with the city on their transit plan. Uh, we are, you know, as a transit agency in favor of transit infrastructure, bus infrastructure included. And um, while, uh, you know, I don't anticipate necessarily things working out 100% and, and us being able to roll out implementation of a new network alongside uh, transit priority corridors, um, the city is a stakeholder, a, a very important stakeholder in this project, and we'll be working alongside them to make sure, um, you know, we, emphasize service on corridors that they've acknowledged as being key corridors um, for transit. And, you know, we'll be working, you know, beyond the lifetime of this project, um, we'll be working on implementation of those corridors. So, um, you know, we can't promise, you know, day one with a new network, we'll have, you know, bus lanes and all of this other great infrastructure, but, but you know, those are ongoing projects that we're doing alongside this one. Right. And I'll just add that speed and reliability, which was at what, one of the, the highest ranking goal that people had of the ones that we shared. A big part of achieving um, speed and reliability is through infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. that's a shared value between the projects. Okay, Henry. Okay. What considerations will be made for riders with disabilities during the redesign? So I, I can start and then Dan, I don't know if you're gonna have some additional things. So of course we know that riders with disabilities are an important part of our of the bus ridership and the market. And when we talked about the transit needs, so I think there's two ways that we need to consider people with disabilities. One of course is in the engagement, which is, I will speak about that in a minute, but also in our analysis. And so the extent that we can make the existing fixed route service as accessible as possible, we will be more successful. We know that people with disabilities ride the use transit at, at a higher rates than members of the underlying population. So we want to understand where they're living, where they're traveling, and make sure that the bus services work for them. And then on the other side, on the engagement side, of course, we need to make sure that we make a special effort to include people with disabilities. And then that can mean um, going specifically to places, to uh, sheltered workshops or other 
and talking to organizations and um, places where people with disabilities work or mm -hmm. receive services or and live. And we know that some people with disabilities are also correlated with age. So there's a lot of ways that we can really make efforts to reach out and engage those riders. Yeah. No. I'll also add just a, a little bit to that in terms of um, we are building a, um, a, a database of organizations and some of those organizations uh, we know um, serve uh, people with uh, disabilities. Uh, we'd like you to uh, make sure that our database is as uh, complete as possible. So if you have uh, suggestions about organizations that you want to make sure are on it, or if you have uh, are, are part of an organization that uh, you would like the team to, to come and talk to your group, we're, we're happy to do that. Please go to septabusrevolution.com and um, add, your, um, add your comments uh, there. So um, thank you for that, that question. Henry, next question. Wait, can I just say one more thing? I just want to sure. thank you for saying that, Beverly, because, mm -hmm. and in general, if you are a representative of an organization or you have ideas about how we can better um, communicate with you or you would like somebody from the Bus Revolution team to come to speak to your organization or make a special effort, please let us know and we'll get that arranged. So thanks, Beverly, for that reminder. Henry? Uh, this is a question about suburban routes. Uh, suburban routes run twisty, circuitous routes and often parallel uh, regional rail lines. How drastically are you planning on changing suburban routes and what is your plan to straighten suburban routes to efficiently connect regional rail? Dan, do you want me to start and then you go or, or do you want to take yeah. the first step? I'll, I'll, I'll try. So I, I mean, we, we are, this is a full system redesign. So of course, we're going to look at the suburban network. Um, we have not gotten into that aspect of the, the redesign. We're not really talking about any changes or improvements. Um, but um, one thing that we will be doing is working really closely with our county partners to identify improvements in the, in the SEPTA network in their counties and make sure that we, um, you know, we work alongside them, you know, through their development plans and their goals to implement the network there. And as far as connections to regional rail, um, you know, that is definitely something that we want to look at a little bit more. Um, we do have a few routes that are that are, you know, directly connected and and you know, sort of related to regional rail service. And I think those are, you know, we have some are successful, some aren't as successful. But that is something I think worth exploring. Um, at certain regional rail stations. So, I mean, these are all things gonna, that are going to get considered, um, you know, whether it's straightening routes out or connecting them to regional rail. We're just, you know, we're at the very early stages. But, um, you know, Beth, Bethany, if you want to give any more thoughts based on your previous experience. Yeah. So one thing I want to do is, can you bring up the first slide in the presentation, the cover of the presentation that shows the mm -hmm. Bus Revolution logo? Mm -hmm. I'll give a minute for that. Um, so the very first slide. Oh, well, you can see it here. Um, so you, when you look at the Bus Revolution logo up in the right-hand corner, you'll see that it's a little bit of a grid mm -hmm. pattern with those with the different colored lines. And you'll see that each of those lines is, is straight. And so that was a very deliberate design mm -hmm. um, characteristic that SEPTA was really insistent on, that when we talk about the Bus Revolution, we talk about straight mm -hmm. lines. And so this idea that um, transit service is is better when it's easy to understand and easy to, to use and that buses start on one street and they, they travel in one direction. So this concept that simple is better than complicated is fundamental to the way that at Nelson Nygaard we um, look at bus routes and try to make them, read when we do redesign is really focus on this idea that simple is better than complicated and that m having routes that operate as straight as possible. Sometimes the road network doesn't let you do that, but that is our goal. Henry? Um, we have another question that I think was related to the maps that you had shown about mm -hmm. uh, population. Um, so this asks about the Navy Yard as an example. Uh, while there are no residents now, there are 15,000 jobs projected uh, to be about 40,000 jobs uh, and 5,000 residents in 2040, 80% of workers commute there by car. Uh, we need more service there, but the type of data used does not allow that story to be shown. So wondering what other 
uh, spaces are being ignored by using residential data. Kind of okay. a comment, so, but maybe also a question how to look at areas yeah. such as that. So I can, um, I, I can speak to that. So the data that I showed today was intended to just be an example, right? So we know that population, population, population density and demographics are an important part of the, what drives demand. We also know that employment is super important mm -hmm. as well. And we also know that it, each job is not necessarily created equally when it comes to transit mm -hmm. services. So there's some jobs like a job at a hospital or at a school or at a restaurant that even though it says one person works there, we know that, that each of those jobs is each of those jobs is bringing a lot of other people to that destination, either kids going to school or um, patients going to a hospital or customers going to a restaurant or a shop. And so we will do a similar type of exercise with employment that looks at mm -hmm. overall employment and employment density, but then adjusts it for transit demand. We also know that some jobs are more likely to be taken or bus riders are more likely to to travel to some jobs they tend to be lower income job lower wage jobs and we know that for example if we can if somebody can instead of driving take the bus they could save six or seven dollars a day that 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 cost savings is something that would be highly valued and we can get that person to get on the bus so we will be looking at employment and land uses and development patterns in as much detail as that we looked at as we look at population density. So I'm sorry if that wasn't clear in my presentation, um, but when you look at our state of the system, you will see a deep dive into all of the factors that determine transit needs. Okay, Henry? Dan, did you want to uh, add? Well, I, I, th I think that's a good answer. I mean, I think the Navy Yard is is a, is a is a location you know that we've gotten a lot of requests for. So I think it'll be interesting to see how the analysis works. Mm -hmm. um, some other uh, factors that might be included in, in the analysis are, are alluded to in this next question. Uh, will the bus revolution take the effects of parking, deliveries, and double parking into consideration? So, yes, I, I mean, I think that that's a hard one for us to predict, right? We can't we can't predict when somebody is going to double park, but we know already the impact of a, a vehicle that parks in a bus loading zone or parks in the street, um, what that can do to the speed and reliability of the bus. So the actions of one vehicle or one car um, can really have a big impact on the bus speed and reliability. So when we think about our infrastructure, too, there are things that we can do to, to try to... Uh, give the advantage to the bus as opposed to the car. Um, I think that's something we're gonna have to talk a lot about and give a lot and, and ask you all about as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can't control where people park necessarily, but we can try to design the bus service so that it reduces and eliminates those conflicts. Not yeah, eliminates, the, but reduces. This, the city's transit plan um, made some pretty clear policy recommendations regarding this. And I think, you know, I think our, I think the, our project needs to double down on a lot of those recommendations where we are saying, you know, we're, this is a key corridor for us. We need to provide additional frequency, but to make that frequency more reliable, we also have to accept that there needs to be some policy changes um, to, you know, whether it's deliveries or parking or, or things like that. So, um, you know, they're going to be identified is in the plan and it's definitely uh, something that we're, we're mindful of and are talking about with the city, but, um, you know, and, and we'll recommend policy changes, but, you know, actually enacting those changes is a longer, is a longer process. Henry? Um, again, there might be some overlap in these questions, but I'll, I'll ask them um, again to, to reiterate and there are um, some important differences. So this question is, how will you be working with other city agencies, so not just, just Otis. Uh, for example, the, the timing and function of weekly sanitation uh, cause, can cause huge delays in bus service. Um. Um, well, Otis, so we had a Otis question is, about the effects of parking and now about uh, sanitation. Yeah, I mean, I think again, yeah, I mean, so, um, yeah, so fortunately, um, when, we, when we meet with Otis, we, we also talk about sanitation so and and the impacts of, of, of those vehicles so I think there are some challenges now um, you know with, with sort of um, you know scheduling around each other um, I think we're hoping that we can make some changes in the future um, that that make that a little bit easier but but you know we are talking we are talking to those groups as well so they're all part of they're all part of sort of our listening sessions and our conversations 
are we asking i'll um take the uh, uh prerogative and uh introduce a, a question also in here um are are we asking that um people identify uh, particularly problem areas as it relates to their experiences with with buses along certain routes as a way of of helping to to guide us in terms of who we need to be uh, talking to because I I know that um, uh, deliveries in Center City are a problem in some neighborhoods there are activities that happen that impede uh, impede buses. So how do we want the public to help us identify those hot spots? Um, so I can start with this mm -hmm. one, Dan, and then if you want to jump in, you can. So I think that there's two approaches to that. Like just, I think this project overall, we have the data, a data-driven analysis, and then we also have the community engagement piece. And so we are, we have the ability to know where the bus is falling behind the schedule and, and where it's sticking with its schedule. And so we can see that when the bus turns on South Street, for example, that it that it slows down a lot and that it's always falling behind schedule when it's on South Street. So, and then we can, at the same time that we do that technical analysis, we can also ask people where they see things and we can, we will do games and tools and have opportunities for people to go onto a map and say like, this is where my bus, I we always, we always fall behind schedule here or the bus is always late when it picks me up and then we can double check some of that feedback with what people are talking what they're telling us where the problems are we can see if we also see that in the data and kind of circle back and then likewise we can the data is going to tell us that the bus is always slow in these locations or it has a hard time staying on on time and we can ask community members if they also have that experience and so i think that that two-way loop between what using data to help us find the problems, but then also listening to people and asking them where they see problems and what they're finding to be problematic. And then, you know, I think those two pieces working together is really where we find the answers. Yeah. Okay. Thank I, you. I think, I think when we post the, the root profiles, I, I think that's a really good opportunity for uh, SEPTA customers and people that are really familiar with the, our service area in the city um, and the suburbs to, um, you know, you know, because there's going to be performance information and speed information on those profiles. Um, they can sort of, um, like Bethany said, they can they can comment, and we can then validate um, what we see in the data. We don't want to trust Henry? just data, and we don't want to just trust yeah, public yeah, it, it, right? They're the right. pieces. Yeah, because yeah, there are things that happen in communities, like there in the summertime. There are a lot of street mm -hmm. festivals, and sometimes that drives the uh, bus operators crazy because they don't always know in advance when those things are happening, so they have to mm -hmm. find another route. Yeah. yeah. So having people. Um, engage with us along those that information I think is going to be very helpful Henry um, next question how are you engaging community-based organizations and stakeholders in this work will you be performing outreach to organizations along key bus routes so the answer to that is yes. Um, we have a strategy that's specifically oriented around community-based organizations, and we're hoping to really engage them as key partners in both crafting the message, but then also delivering that message. So um, if you work for a community-based organization, hopefully you'll hear from our team in the coming weeks, and you'll be a partner through this process. Yeah. Um, SEPTA, SEPTA service planning um, does have a good track record of working with community-based organizations to um, communicate service changes and other modifications. So, um, you know, this is obviously a much larger, uh, bigger process, but yeah, we, we, we that is a, a really important part of outreach. As we said, uh, we want to, we're, we're going to take the outreach to the communities. We're going to, um, you know, go to their meetings or schedule separate meetings if need be, but, but we're going to, we're going to take the information to those communities on those key bus routes. And we will be mapping the um, where the community based organizations are, so they we make sure that every part of the um, sector's service area is is covered, and that we've connected with organizations uh, in those uh, in those areas. So that is um, a very important part of our of constructing the um, the database. 
Henry. Okay. Uh, we got our first question about the pandemic. Um, so I guess good news that it's taken this long. Um, so other systems, MBTA, SF, MTA, New York City Transit, and CTA are acting quickly to consolidate time savings uh, from pandemic-related congestion declines, um, less traffic, to ensure bus service is improved and competitive, when as commute-related travel returns. Is there an intention to take action uh, at any point uh, before the 2023 uh, implementation uh, timeline? I, I'm going to assume that this is about the level of service being provided because that's that's what I'm that's all, that all I can read out of the question. Um, we may be making service modifications um, over the next few years in advance of the redesign. Um, I can't say what those may be or, or what they won't be, but um, you know that's that would be communicated through you know you know we can communicate it through this process as well, but those will be done separately. But I, I, I'm not sure if that is that is in the cards right now. I think I think there is a goal to kind of um, you know leave as much service you know keep as much service on the street as we can um, you know even though ridership is is you know still ridership is. Um, been bouncing back, but it's still, you know, much lower than pre-COVID le levels. Um, but I anticipate, um, you know, leaving the service levels, you know, where they are over the next few years with some modifications based on various factors. But I, I'm not sure if that's the, 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 I'm not sure if that exactly was the nature of the question, but. Okay. Bethany, did you, did you want to add something? No. No. I, I just want to say that the, both the consultant team and, and SEPTA is, um, mm -hmm. monitors uh, um, frequently what other major transit mm -hmm. systems are, are doing. So we are aware of mm -hmm. um, you know, the modifications and changes that are happening in other areas and doing, um, you know, trying to figure out if that's something that would work in this region. So we're aware of what those, those, um, uh, those entities are doing. We have about five more minutes. So I think that that's, um, we can take maybe two more questions, Henry, and, um, and then we'll move to a closing statement. Um, by Bethany, and then I'll come I'll come back on. So Henry, okay. And we're doing our best to get to every question, but there are there are a lot of good questions um, coming in. So if we don't get uh, the answer to your question during this session, we will add that question uh, to the record and respond to it after the webinar. Um, so this next question is: While this project is about the bus network. Uh, will SEPTA also be considering changes to any other modes of scheduling, like regional rail or the subways, as part of this to better align uh, the network for people who have to use multiple uh, transit uh, vehicles? Um, I th like I said earlier, I think the focus is going to be on the bus network, but I, I do think it makes sense. Um, I mean, it only makes sense that if we're if we're sort of realigning some suburban services to interact with regional rail, that we also look at those um, those uh, you know those schedules as well. Um, and you know this and and since um, connectivity and I believe that was the of the secondary goals that was the highest rated one. Um, how the network integrates is, is going to be really important. Um, you know, as we go through the different design scenarios. So I think making sure that the new schedules are, are in alignment to maximize the ability to move throughout the system. Um, because now we now that we don't have an additional fee for transfer and we really want to we really want our customers to be able to use our system in full. Um, but yeah, I think I think we'll have to broaden out um, our, our look at schedules in the future. But um, that, that's a good question. Actually, I hadn't thought about that. And, and we are looking at the system holistically. So um, there are yeah. separate initiatives that certainly take uh, the bus revolution initiative uh, into consideration. So, um, you know, we're looking at rail initiatives that have the same objective in terms of adding, uh, facilitating the experience, uh, whether it be uh, the King of Prussia rail initiative that's that's helping to extend um, services out to uh, an important community. Um, we're also looking at 
um, you know, extending the bus service through uh, the partnership we announced last week with the ride service VIA. Uh, so there are a number of initiatives that will really be connected to this bus revolution initiative as well. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question, Henry. Not one of those long, complicated ones. <laughs> right, we, got, we got one short and sweet for you. Uh, how are bus drivers being brought into the process? Uh, nice. Good question. Yeah. You want to take uh, that, Dan, or you want me to? Yeah, we, we're going to have a, we will, uh, we've already begun these conversations and we will be having uh, direct outreach to the operators in each district. So they will be providing, they will get to see um, the materials generated in support of this project. They will get to provide feedback uh, like, um, you know, office staff as well as the public will be, and they will be important stakeholders in the process as well. Yes. Yeah. So I was just going to ask if we could bring up slide 30. Yeah. Um, in the last minute, I just want to remind everybody that we do have a website, um, SEPTABUSREVOLUTION.COM. If you go to the website, you will see a fact sheet and then also some frequently asked questions. We'll update those questions based on some of the questions you asked us today. So that information will be available. We also have a short survey on the website. We have a telephone number, 267-291-6045. You can call that number. It's staffed uh, Monday through Wednesday, um, 8 a.m. Till, till noon. Other times you'll get a recording. And then we can also you can also send us an email at um, busnetwork at SEPTA.org. So we're looking forward to working with you all um, as we get started and, and dive into this project and hope that we hear from you again soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And, and thank you especially um, to the sign language interpreters who were great as usual. Um, we want you to be a part of the, uh, of the bus revolution and uh, want to thank everybody for participating. If you think this was a, a great session, encourage people, they, tell people they can sign up for the session at six o'clock this evening. Ooh. It will follow the same uh, follow the same format. So be a part of the bus revolution. Um, visit the website septabusrevolution.com. And thank you everybody for participating in the session today.